This is the video for your centripetal, centripetal force activity. So we're introducing a new topic, depending on which lab you do first. You may already have had a little bit of induction, introduction to angular motion. So before I talk about the lab itself, I want to talk a little bit about the difference between angular motion and linear motion and how we go back and forth between the two. So in this example, I have a bicycle wheel. I put a tape mark here. And the question is, how does the distance that I go linearly, sideways, which we've been dealing with the whole class, how does that compare to the number of revolutions an object turns, whether it's a, a wheel or a ball or a cylinder, whatever the shape is? So we're just going to look at that. So I set this tape mark down, and we're going to go one complete revolution. So I started right here. It goes all the way around. And then my linear distance is from right here, from there, all the way to here. That's the linear distance I went. That has to match the distance around the wheel, which is just the circumference of the wheel. So let's look at what that tells us about the relationship between angular motion and linear motion. So we have a circle. That's basically the wheel. It's the a cylinder, whatever the shape is, the ball. Okay, And we have a radius, r. This works for all the round shapes. So we have the distance all the way around. That distance, that circumference is 2 pi times r. That is also equal to 1 revolution. All the way around that is one revolution, which is what we just did in the video. Turns out one revolution is equal to 2 pi, a unit we call radians, which many of you, if I hope most of you, are familiar with from your college trig or calculus or whatever math class you've had. So that, because of that, since one revolution is 2 pi radians and the circumference is 2 pi r, it turns out that the linear distance you go is equal to the radius times the rev the distance you went around. You're changing angle if you measure your angle in radians. So if I put in 1 for one revolution, I will not get the correct answer. But if I put in 2 pi for 2 pi radians, I will get the correct answer. And using the same idea, we could show that your linear is always equal to your velocity, your angular times the radius. We always use Greek letters for angular. It's also going to turn out that all the formulas we learn for our linear for our linear uh, kinematics, all the formulas we learn for x and v and a are going to apply, as we'll see in a minute, are going to apply to these angular values. Now there's one thing I'll show you in a minute. This V is the tangential velocity, which I'll show in my next picture as the A is also the tangential acceleration. So now we're going to look at what we're actually going to do in the lab, and I'll show you the I'm going to show you the picture first, then I'm going to show you the physical setup. So we're going to have a mass. They're going to be the stoppers on the end of a string. We're going to swing them around in a circle. So the dashed line is the path this mass is going to take. That means this mass has a t is for tangential velocity, which we just saw is equal to r times how fast you're spinning it. So I've got, if the string broke, the string's pulling it in. The string is making it change directions, because we know from Newton's uh, first law, the law of uh, inertia, that this mass wants to keep going straight. So the string is pulling it in. We're going to talk about that more in a second, which, and it's kind of splits the difference. The string pulls it in, so instead of going straight, it goes at an angle, and it makes a circle. But if I cut the string, the velocity this object would go in that direction is tangential to the circle. So that's my tangential velocity is equal to r times omega. In other words, if I put a penny on there and on a wheel and was spinning the wheel and then the penny came loose, this is the velocity it would go flying off with, is r times how fast the wheel spinning if I measure this in radians. So if it's radians per second, then this is going to be meters per second or whatever the uh, linear distance unit is for the r. So my mass goes from here to here. This is the same mass. So it 
has changed in angle. The angle it went, the change in angular distance is theta. We always use Greek letters. The arc of the circle would be my x. That's the linear distance, even though you say, well, I'm not going linear. If you were walking along that path and you were kind of turning, you would be going straight line. And that x is equal to r times the theta if the theta is measured in radians. Again, my acceleration in the tangential, if I'm spinning with constant speed, then my tangential acceleration would be zero. My acceleration is not zero, but my tangential acceleration would be zero. And here's what I was talking about. Every formula, I'm not going to write them all down, but every formula we've learned for V equals delta X over delta T, you can replace V with omega. That's the Greek letter omega. You can replace X with theta, and you can replace A with alpha, and all those formulas still work. We're not going to use most of them in our lab today, but through the next few days, we'll probably use most of them. Now, what we're looking at today is we have that string is pulling in. We call that a centripetal force. Centripetal is pulling in. So if I but Newton's second law tells me any force I have is always equal to this mass times the acceleration. But the acceleration has to be in the direction of the force. So my centripetal, centripetal force is equal to the mass times my centripetal acceleration. And without going into the math, because it's a little complicated, you can show that that force is equal to mv squared over r. And if I plug in this into my v squared, that turns out to be equal to mass times the uh, radius times the uh, omega squared times the angular velocity squared. And this is the formula we're going to use today. We're going to use the, for the velocity of centripetal force is equal to m r omega squared. We're going to do two parts of the lab to show that that works. And actually, I think your data is going to come out pretty good.